When examining the world of movie knockoffs, one thing you discover pretty quickly is that there are a ton of countries that have tried ripping off American movies in their quest for box office gold. Italy is, of course, one of the more notable examples. India has also produced their fair share. But when it comes to truly spitting in the eye of international copyright laws, perhaps no country is more infamous than Turkey. So much so that you only need to put the word Turkish in front of a popular American blockbuster, and boom, you got yourself a low-budget Turkish knockoff. To that end, we have Turkish Star Wars, Turkish Star Trek, Turkish Rambo, Turkish Wizard of Oz, the list goes on and on. The movie I'm going to talk about today is called Three Dev Adam, which roughly translates to either Three Mighty Men or Three Giant Men. But of course, nobody over here calls it that. No, here it's better known by the title of Turkish Spider-Man. Why? <laughs> That's right. And this movie was made in 1973, so Turkey was actually ahead of the game when it came to superhero movies. By the way, I was wondering what happened to my Spider-Man pajamas. I knew Mom didn't throw them away. And Spider-Man's not the only popular American superhero to get Turkified in this movie. It also has Turkish Captain America. Which I guess would make him Captain Turkish America? Captain American Turkey? Eh, whatever. So, what's the plot of this movie? Are Spider-Man and Captain America gonna team up and fight some villains or something? <laughs> Spider-Man's the bad guy in this movie? Oh no, movie, don't you know what happens when you make Spider-Man turn bad? The results are never good. Still, I gotta admit, it was pretty clever of them to rip off a scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark several years before that movie was even made. Well played, Turkey. Oh, I'm sorry, I appear to have put in Turkish Mod Squad by mistake. I'm not really sure who these characters are, so I guess I'll just let Turkish Ricardo Montalban here do the talking. Bu arada sahte dolarlar da dolaylı olarak piyasaya sürülmüş oluyor. Amerika'da, Meksika'da, Brezilya'da. Wait, hang on a second. America, Mexico, and Brazil? Are those the countries you plan on ripping off for this movie? Because if so, I would love to see Turkish Elite Squad. Alright, as you can probably tell by now, just like with Hobbit USSR, my copy of the movie doesn't have any subtitles and it's not dubbed into English. So as a result, I'm a little fuzzy as to what the plot of this thing exactly is. Honestly, though, that's probably for the best. I mean, when it comes to low-budget Turkish knockoff movies, things like understanding the plot or knowing what the characters are actually saying just kind of gets in the way, you know? Hey, watch it, buddy. There's only room for one flasher in this park. Although he was probably hoping to meet somebody wearing Spidey underoos that was a bit younger. Adios, Mafia. Well, hey, what do you know? The Turkish words for Adios, Mafia are the same as they are in English. Well, somebody got murdered, so time for a fashion show. In case you're wondering what that scene had to do with the rest of the movie, good, because so am I. Ah, uh, well, no time to ask questions. Looks like we got ourselves a car chase. From what I can gather, the heroine's been kidnapped by a group of Turkish-run Burgundies. Our hero should be up to the challenge, though. They're so dedicated to being superheroes, they always wear their underwear on the outside. Even when they're taking a shower. The soundtrack for this car chase may seem a little strange, but it's actually the composer saying, This movie sucks in Morse code. Yes, thank you, movie. That scene was exactly what this car chase needed. Good job. What are these guys gonna do to her anyway? Hello, Chef Ben Bekir. Defile salonunda yakaladığımız kızı tepedeki depoya getirdik. You know, I never should have doubted Turkish Captain America. After all, he even sports an all-American mullet. I'm not too sure about his fighting skills, though. <laughs> Okay, apparently that guy just shot the editor. 
I should probably mention that Spider-Man and Captain America aren't the only borrowed superheroes in this movie, since it also has... El Santo? The Mexican wrestler? Spider-Man, Captain America, El Santo. You know what? Why not? If you're gonna shamelessly borrow heroes from other countries, you might as well do it from more than one. Who knows? Maybe this means Turkish Ultraman will make an appearance now. Now that I think about it, it is appropriate that El Santo's in this movie. After all, most of the fight choreography is on about the same level as pro wrestling. <laughs> Okay, buddy, the only reason you took this karate class is because your wife wanted you to get in shape. Do everybody a favor and just run, okay? Hey, careful, buddy. That's most of the movie's budget you're handling there. We see Spider-Man plotting with Turkish Uncle Leo here, but he quickly gets bored with that and decides to spy on a woman in the shower. Hmm, my spidey eyebrows are tingling. <laughs> So I guess that's what happens when you drop the soap in a Turkish prison. Uh-oh, they don't look happy. I think they're reading the reviews for this movie. Also, was this thing edited with that boat propeller from the beginning? Just look at this fight scene. Hey, care, fandom. Yes, thank you, movie. Once again, that short four-second scene of someone talking was exactly what was needed in the middle of this fight scene. You know, in my last video, I pointed out how annoying it was when you cut to a different scene at the beginning of an action sequence? Let's see what happens when you put a random scene in the middle of an action sequence. <laughs> Still annoying. Hey, what are you guys doing? You leave Turkish Jim Croce alone. Alright, enough of that. What's Spidey doing? Oh, I'm sorry. I think my VCR decided to edit that scene. No time for that, though. Spidey's got a prisoner to interrogate. Get it in. <laughs> I think they're gonna torture him by projecting Turkish Batman and Robin on that thing. Oh, never mind. They're gonna torture him using gerbils. The deadliest rodent of them all. Sure hope they washed that thing, though. Before they got it, it was just in Richard Gere's ass. Hello, Ali. Dollarları paketleyin. Bu gece göndereceğiz. Saat tam 23'te oradan gelip alacaklar. Adamlara haber verildi. Saat kaç? Wow, that's sad. Apparently the strip clubs in Turkey are so bad they can only get people's shadows to take off their clothes. Whoa, never mind. Damn, now there's something you're not gonna see in a Marvel Studios production. Turkish Lex Luthor doesn't seem too impressed by it, though. Once again, I have no idea if that's supposed to be Lex Luthor or not. For all I know, it could just be a skinny version of Turkish Kingpin. You know, I will say this about this movie, it certainly doesn't skimp on the fight scenes. I gotta admit, though, the fight choreography is kind of reminding me of a certain other popular American superhero. Uh, okay, why does the music abruptly stop every time there's a cut? Was the music recorded live on set or something? Each time there's a camera move, I keep expecting to see a guy pressing play on a boombox. Honestly, movie, I expect a little more professionalism in my low-budget Turkish knockoffs. <laughs> oh no, Spidey, what are you doing? Turkish Psycho's being filmed next week. Still, I guess while I'm here... Alright, I realize that because I don't speak the language, I'm not going to know exactly what's going on, but I am really confused as to what Spider-Man's evil plan is. So far, all he's done is kill people in the shower and collect some statues that look like things my grandma would collect. I know killing random people is bad, but it seems like something a slasher movie villain would do. 
It's not really a diabolical plan to take over the world, unless he plans on doing it to everyone on Earth one at a time. And as far as the statues go, the best I can figure is that he's collecting them to impress his girlfriend here. Wow, even when he's evil, Spider-Man's got a thing for redheads. Uh, hey, I kind of wanted to see where that was going. Oh, never mind, there it is. No, no, you're doing it wrong. Haven't you seen the American Spider-Man movie? You're supposed to be having sex with him upside down. Fun fact. The soundtrack to that scene was actually taken from the middle portion of Turkish Whole Lotta Love. And I know this is going to be hard to believe, but this is where the movie gets kind of weird. <laughs> well then, I now officially have the weirdest boner ever. Hello? Evet. Mankiye mağazasını mı basmışlar? Dün gece mi? Back to the main story. Captain America and El Santo get captured by Turkish Lex Luthor, I think. But they're in luck because it turns out supervillains in Turkey are just as gullible as they are in America. Man, I certainly cannot fault this movie for not having enough action. At this point, I think there's been a fight scene every five minutes. Seriously, a WWE match doesn't have this many false hits. I will say this though, this is the first time I've seen a guy use somebody else's legs to beat somebody up. Okay, I guess the projector decided to edit that scene. Okay, come on guys, there's only 10 minutes left and you still haven't defeated Spider-Man yet. There's two of you and only one of him, it should be easy. What the... there's more than one? Oh, Jesus, the Clone Saga was painful enough. I don't want to know how bad the Turkish knockoff is. So it turns out Spider-Man can duplicate himself, or there's more than one, or something. But instead of creating a whole bunch of Spideys and attacking all at once, he makes the classic mistake of attacking one at a time and only duplicating when he gets killed. <laughs> No, air conditioning, Captain America's one weakness. Oh man, how is he ever going to get out of this terrible peril? Oh, okay, never mind, I guess he's okay. Eventually though, our heroes defeat the last Spidey clone or whatever and save the day. Or do they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, obviously, it would be unfair to hold this movie up to the same standards as a Hollywood blockbuster, so how does it stack up against other Turkish knockoffs? Nah, that as well as you might think. If you think about it, this movie does cover all the right bases. It's got action, it's got romance, and most importantly, it's got blatant disregard for properly portraying American pop cultural icons. And really, aren't those the kinds of things that a movie with the word Turkish at the beginning of it should have? Well, that's all for now. Until next time.